Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 8. In the New Testament, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Of course, the Bible is God's word, but man is the one to put the verse numbers and the chapter numbers in there to make it easier for us to study and read it. Uh, a lot of times in the Bible, especially the Gospels or even the Old Testament, uh, we have chapter 8 and then we have chapter 9, but chapter 8 and chapter 9 really are together. They really shouldn't have a stopping point, really should read them together you know a lot of times you read the bible you read one chapter and you stop next day you read the next chapter but there's a continual story here from chapter 8 into chapter 9 but look at chapter 8 look at the last verse 59 chapter 8 john chapter 8 verse 59 it says then they took up stones to cast at him but jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going to the midst of them and so passed by so what just happened was Jesus claimed that he is God, and right, rightly so. So the religious leaders wanted to stone him. So Jesus went away, says, Jesus passed by. Now, look at chapter 9, verse 1. I like said there, there really should be no stopping point. Look at verse 1, chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, okay? You, you see the story is continuing. It's not stopping, it's continuing. And as Jesus passed by, I saw a man which is blind, from his birth. So now we're going to get into a story about the blind man being healed by Jesus. Very interesting story. But the point I want to make is that from chapter 8, chapter 9, we see that Jesus, it says both times, Jesus passed by. Jesus passed by. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. The title is Jesus Passed By. Now, let's pray. Dear Lord, help us as we come to this scripture. Uh, to use this to teach a very important truth about you. I pray that you'll help us to uh, pay attention and get everything we can from a teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus passed by. So I'm, I'm going to mention a number of things about this fact that Jesus passed by. Number one, Jesus passes by everyone at least one time. Yes. Amen. Jesus passes by everyone at least one time. Take your Bibles and turn to, uh, turn to Romans. It's John, Acts, and then Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and God has, so they are without excuse. God says pe people can look at creation and understand there has to be a creator. Only a fool who rejects God says there's evolution. Yeah. Only, only a fool. Uh, I, I met a pastor, he's a pastor now, he's a pastor in New England many years ago. He used to work, he was an engineer for... Uh, uh, champion spark plugs and uh, he was an atheist evolutionist but then he got saved and when he got saved by his own testimony he he had to look himself in the mirror he, he tried he got off his knees trusted Christ got off his knees and said I've been I've been a liar <laughs> and says it's because of pride so he went back to work and told his all, all his fellow engineers you know, we're all lying <laughs> yeah you know that <laughs> and it's just pride only a fool would say God did not create all these things. Look, look, I mean, look at the creation. Only God could do that. So God says, all you have to do is look at creation and realize there's a God. Now, a person who has not heard the truth of the Bible may not understand who God is and what he did to pay for their sin, but he's going to have to come to a conclusion there's only one God. A stone is not a God. A statue is not a God. Uh, Greek mythology, those, those are not gods. Those are not true gods. There's only one true God. God, and that's it. So Jesus does pass by everybody. God says they are without excuse. No one is going to be able to stand before God and say, I did not know. No, they knew something. They knew something. All right, number, number one, Jesus passes by everyone at least one time. Number two, 
Jesus does not have to pass by more than once. Jesus does not have to pass by more than once. People who reject the truth may not have another chance. God is merciful. God may give another chance. He may give ten chances. He may give a thousand chances. But God is not obligated to do that. Jesus will pass, every, pass by everyone one time, for sure. But if you reject the truth, that does not mean he'll come back again. That does not mean you have another opportunity to hear the same truth again. You could die. Your heart could become hardened. You may have a stroke. And you'll never have an opportunity to understand that truth again. Number three, this is very important. We are responsible for each time that Jesus passes by us. We are responsible for each time Jesus passes by us. Romans chapter 1 verse 20, verse 20 says, So that they are without excuse. They are without excuse. Um, th th think with me for a moment. When you went to school, your children go to school, and uh, they sit in the classroom, and they give tests, right? So the kids who sit in the class, and they listen very well, and they are given a test and on how much they actually learn. The child who listens very well and the child who does not listen are given the same test. Is that not correct? Well, at least that's the way it's supposed to be. Nowadays, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, in California, I think it's San Diego, California, uh, what they're going to do is it's just kind of like a pass-fail grade from now on. The teacher evaluates whether or not they think the child got the material. <laughs> and that's, I said, a lot of crazy things. But in, what it's, the way it's supposed to work is one test is given to the whole class. Whether the child listened or not, they're given the same test. If they listen, they're given the same test. Whether they were there or not, they still get, they're still given the same test. Now, the child who listened and was, was there in every class, they'll do a lot better than the ones who were there but did not listen. But they're given the same test. God gives all of us the same test. When you go to church, you listen well, God is one day going to test you on that material. If you, if you miss the church service, you're still going to get the test one day on what was said. You'll still be responsible for the material. I mean, how many, for how many years did I hear that, both in school and in college? You will be responsible for this on the test. So listen, you will be responsible for this on the test. That's what God says. God says it's preaching going on to church Sunday morning. God says you will be responsible for the test. I'm going to give you an exam. One day, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not for 10 years, but maybe 30 years from now, you're going to get an exam on what was taught in this church. If you're here and you listen, you may pass the exam. If you're not here or you're here but don't listen, you're going to be given the same exam, but you'll probably fail. Uh, for example, I, in our church in Trinidad announced several weeks ahead of time that I was going to teach on the subject preparing for marriage. Because we, uh, we had teenagers, we had young adults there, and I, I told them I'm going to teach on preparing for marriage on, on a Sunday night, how to prepare for it. So make sure you, write, you marry the right person. But the people that needed it the most didn't come. So the next Sunday I told them, I said, you know, you're going to be tested on what I taught last Sunday night. <laughs> Those of you who were not there, you're going, to, you're going to be tested on that, and you're probably going to fail. You're probably going to marry the wrong person. But I said, I can't, I'm not responsible for that, but you are. It's too late. We will be responsible for everything taught in this church. So the best thing to do is come and listen because you will be tested one day. So number three is we are responsible for each time Jesus passes by. Remember Luke chapter 12, verse 47, 48, to whom much is given, much is required. God's giving you a lot of Bible teaching in his church, so we are responsible for that. All right, number four. Number four. When Jesus passes by, there may not be a lot of what we will call fanfare. When Jesus passes by, there may, there, there may not be a lot of what we call 
fanfare. In the Gospels, as we just saw in John chapter 8 and John chapter 9, when Jesus passed by, there wasn't a lot of, you know, there wasn't a big, you know, it was not a, a campaign rally. The only time they were, they were uh, saying Hosanna to the highest was when Jesus was riding the donkey into Jerusalem, and three days later, those same people were saying crucify him. Most of the time, it's just like what John chapter 8 and John chapter 9 said. Jesus passed by, they tried to kill him, then Jesus passed on by and then met a blind man who needed to be healed and also needed salvation. The churches where Jesus is going to be most present, there's not going to be a lot of entertainment. It's just going to be Bible preaching. Uh, a man, uh, he came to our church in uh, Nigeria, and he is from a charismatic church where it's just entertainment. It's not the Bible, it's just entertainment. So he came, and came to me after church, and he said, he said, Pastor Long, all you do is preach, preach, preach. And so I told him, I said, if Jesus himself were here, that's all he would do. Right. I said, look, look in the Gospels, what did he do? That's, right. that's exactly, he just taught him. That's it, that's it. I said, so if Jesus was here, you'd, you'd be saying the same thing to him. Yeah. You'd, you'd walk away just like they did in John chapter 6. Yeah. Services, church services, where it's just all about money. I'm sorry, Jesus is not there. Uh, the, lead, the religious leaders in the temple tried that. What did Jesus do? <laughs> he drove them all out, turned over their tables, and got himself a whip, and physically drove them away from the temple. Yes, we need tithes and offerings. Absolutely. But when it's all about money, it's all about raising money for this thing. Uh, uh, to uh, members of our home church, Independent Baptist Church, they told my wife and I, they visited a church, and the pastor and his wife were on an island in the Caribbean. So on Sunday morning, they were, they were you know, sending live stream from the Caribbean island, and the pastor was talking about uh, the church raising money that morning for his wife to have a Bentley. You know what a Bentley is? You know, it's a very expensive car. And so they said that they, when church was over, that they left, and that was the end of, never went back again. I, I'm sorry, Jesus is not going to be there. Churches where the, the preacher gets all the attention, Jesus is not going to be there. It's not about the pastor. It's about Jesus. Uh, in that, in uh, Trinidad, on the main highway, they call the North-South Highway. There's only two highways in Trinidad, North-South and East-West. <laughs> it was one the year, one here. On the main North-South Highway, they had two huge billboards. One was of a Hindu pundit. Uh, Hindu, a pundit is a, a Hindu teacher. It's, it's, called P, it's spelled P U N. D-I-T, a pundit. So they had a big billboard advertising this Hindu pundit. You know, they, his, they showed his picture real big and you know, gave his name, whatever it was. And then they also had a billboard for a preacher. And it's the same type of thing. The, you know, they show a big p picture of the preacher. And they mention the preacher's church. But even for the preacher's billboard, there's no mention of Jesus. No mention of salvation. No mention of the Bible. It's just a preacher. What's the difference between the billboard of the preacher and the, the billboard of the Hindu pundit? It's all about those people. It's not about God. And so it, a church is not supposed to be about the preacher. Fortunately, you have a preacher who serves God and serves the church. And that's what a preacher should do. But churches where it's all about the preacher, I'm sorry, Jesus is not there. Jesus is in his word. Amen. And we take the word of God and uplift Jesus Christ. That's, right. that's where Jesus is. Right. Number five. Number five. When Jesus passes by, we may not recognize him. When Jesus passes by, we may, we may not recognize him. Do you know John chapter 1, verse 11? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. 
When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, did the, king, did the, the, uh, the kings of Israel come to see him? Nope. They knew he was there. The angels had to go to the shepherds in the field and say, please come and worship the king. And they came. The religious leaders cared nothing about Jesus. So God brought the lonely shepherds who love God. When Jesus passes by, we may not recognize him. The first time Jesus came, they did not understand who he was. That's why I did not care about him. Sometimes Jesus comes into our lives and we do not recognize him. Sometimes Jesus comes as a sickness. Sometimes Jesus comes as a, as a family problem. And we don't recognize it's him. Sometimes Jesus comes as a financial problem. And so we don't recognize him. We just think that when God blesses us, oh, that's, that's from God. But sometimes God brings things into our lives that are not pleasant so that he can teach us something. That's right. uh, all of you, I'm sure you've heard uh, the, the uh, story about footprints in the sand. The man viewed his life and he saw two footprints, Jesus' footprints and his own footprints. And then the man noticed there's a time in his life when there's only one set of footprints. And he turned to Jesus and said, why did you leave me? Why did you forsake me? And Jesus told the man, during those difficult times, there's one set of footprints because I was carrying you. Amen. And that's what God does. God allows us to go through difficult times. But God wants to get closer to us during those times. I used to tell our people in Calabar, that the way I learned the Bible was this. Of course, I read the Bible, study the Bible, but the times I learned the most were the times where difficulties were in my life. And when you go through a difficult time, you open the Bible, all of a sudden, God just opens things up that you never saw before. And you'll learn things you never learned before. It's, a lot of people say, hey, Pastor, how did you learn that thing in the Bible? Well, it, it, it usually came from a time when we were going through a very difficult time. I went through the Bible and read things I never read before. And God said, I'm going to teach you something. And God would. So there are times that Jesus passes through our lives and passes by our lives. And we may not recognize him for who he is. Or we may not recognize the fact that he wants to work in our lives. And use those difficult times to use us in a very special way. But yet, those are the times we think that somehow God does not love us or that God has something against us. Rather than just saying, all right, God, you know what is best for me. You want to teach me something, so please teach me. And then you open up his word and he will teach you. Number six, then. Number six. Jesus oftentimes uses us to pass by for him. Jesus uses us to pass by for him. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 25. Of course, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse, uh, starting with verse 34. Matthew 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is when the millennium starts. Verse 35. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. Uh, gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in naked, and you clothed me. I was sick. He visited me. I was in prison. He came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? In other words, Jesus, we, we didn't actually see you. Where were you? Verse 39. Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? 
verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, As much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. In other words, God sent somebody into your life who needed Jesus. What, did we, what do we do? Somebody needs the gospel. What do we do? A hungry person comes. A truly hungry person comes. What do we do? Jesus said, I was there. I need you to do what I would do if I were there. That's one of the purposes of the church. One of the purposes of the church is help genuine people who are in need. People who are sick. People who are hurting. People have problems that nobody can solve except God. And so the church is there to say, God loves you. And let me show you how much God loves you. And they trust Christ for salvation. And then you teach them Bible principles so that they can live by. And then you see God help them. God loves us. And God wants to use us on his behalf. So we can say, hey, I'm just telling you what Jesus wants to tell you. This, this is what Jesus wants to tell you. He loves you. He paid the price for your sin. You trust him for salvation, go to heaven. Once you trust Christ, you have a home in heaven that's absolutely sure. And then you say, then I could, let me teach you what the Bible says. Let me show you how much God loves you. Let me show you what the Bible teaches, how we should live, how we should honor God. And then, it's, then, it comes, then a light comes on. Oh, okay, this is what I should be doing. Yeah, that's what you should be doing. And then they start doing it, and God starts blessing. God wants to use us to pass by for him. Jesus passes by everyone at least one time. He may pass by a thousand times, but we're not guaranteed that. If you know that you're a sinner and you need, you need salvation, you're a sinner who deserves to die and go to hell based on the Bible. But Jesus paid the price for our sin. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, down that cross and rose again. If you trust Christ as your only way to go to heaven, not your works, not church, nothing except Jesus, God will give you salvation. It's a gift from God. Very simple. God comes. Now, he may not tell you that again. I may tell you that every day for the, next, for the rest of your life. I don't know. But he's not obligated to. He comes one time. We better keep our eyes open and realize Jesus is trying to teach me something. Yes. So let me take this opportunity to learn what Jesus wants to teach me. And my wife and I are going through a difficult time. This is the third time we've had to leave a field. <laughs> it's the third time. And I do not have a clue uh, what we're doing. I, I really don't. If you, if you ask me, I can give you some ideas. I'm thinking about moving to South Dakota because no lockdowns there. So I, I really don't know what we're doing. So this is different. This is a different period of our lives. But God knows. God knows. And so we have to turn to the Bible and say, all right, God, what do you want us to do? Jesus passes by. Use those opportunities where Jesus passes by, to get closer to him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you help us to understand what you were teaching here. You're, you're passing by. Help us to take advantage of that and learn all we can while you're there.